Okay, uh, Shalom. Welcome to our uh, premiere episode of um, The Bible Speaks. And uh, basically, we are priests from uh, Great Millstone. I know you've seen our videos, you know, of us speaking on the street. I'd like to thank the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Shai, for giving us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to bring these scriptures to life. And basically, so you brothers can uh, read along and follow and understand. All right, because that's the main premise of the show is the Holy Bible, which is what you're looking at up there on the screen. I'd also, like to thank Elder High Priest uh, Taha for his insight on doing that show on hell and using that format that he did. Because basically, if those of you that remember that show that he did on explaining about hell in the scriptures, if you remember the format that he used, that's the same format that we're going to use. All you're going to see is the scriptures and basically. Uh, certain pictures that will illustrate what we're bringing up. Now, uh, I want to. The first topic we're going to talk about on our premiere show is martial law. The reason why I selected martial law is because basically that's what's coming. All right, and uh, we believe after the next attack, and there is going to be an another attack, and that's all found throughout the scriptures. All right. There is going to be another attack like there was on 9-11, but it's going to be a lot worse. And it's going to precipitate something called martial law. All right? Now, I just want to read the definition of martial law to you, because a lot of people are not familiar with that definition. Uh, this is from dictionary.com. You can go online and type it up yourself, martial law. Uh, basically, martial law is a system of rules that takes effect when the military takes control of the normal administration of justice. So basically what that's saying is that the military is going to take control. All right? You're going to have a military form of government. All right? And uh, they're not going to be nice. <laughs> All right? And we're going to show you that in the scriptures. That's part of the, the military form of government is part of the international bankers, their program to try to bring what they call a new world order, right? Which is basically a new world order of Satan, the devil. And like we've been telling you, you're going to find out during this martial law slash so-called new world order government that the white man is the devil. Because a lot of you so-called Negroes don't want to accept that the white man is the devil. You're going to find out basically during those times that the white man is the devil, right? So let me go into the first scripture. Let's go to the book of uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter, and the 12th verse. All right, Revelation, the 12th chapter, and the 12th verse. Let's see what it says. Revelation, chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Okay, let's go back and examine that. It says, Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. And that's talking about who? That's talking about the angels. It's talking about the Most High, His Son, Yahweh Shai, and the angels. Because martial law, that's the beginning of the Most High getting ready to judge this so-called white man. Alright? And uh, if you go... Also, we're going to be rejoicing too, because when we see that martial law, is, uh, when, it, when we see it happening, we know that that's so much more closer to us being redeemed out of the situation that we're in. And I'll show you that in the book of uh, Luke, the 21st chapter. If you go to the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, Luke 21 and... Uh, what is it? Luke 21 and um, Luke 21 and uh, about 20. Yeah, it started 20. <clears throat> Luke 21 and 20. And when you and when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Right. When you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now that happened uh, during the time of 70 AD, when you had the uh, Titus Caesar and Vespasian Caesar, 
and they besieged Jerusalem. All right, they surrounded it, and basically, it was our people that was living in Jerusalem at that time. You can read about the history of Masada, how the Romans besieged that city called Masada, and basically, uh, a lot of our people were slaughtered during the time of Masada. They end up eat, you know, there was a famine there, and they, they ended up eating their own children, and all of that. You can read about that history. So now it says, when you shall see Jerusalem come past with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Now that's going to happen again. And Jerusalem represents you so-called Negroes, you know, your West Indians and Puerto Ricans that live in the ghetto. The armies that's going to come past you is those uh, martial law troops, all right? And, uh, you know, you got different uh, police groups such as FEMA, the MJTF, the ATF, these different police groups. There's a picture, a shot of it. That's what you're going to see. Those are the armies that's going to come past Jerusalem. Then it says, they know that the desolation thereof is nigh. All right? Go on. It says, uh, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. Go on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the country uh, enter therein too. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. Go on. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Right, but warn to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Go on. For there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon this people. Right, and when you read the definition of martial law, what does it say? It's a system where the military takes control of the normal administration of justice. Alright, so the Bible says there's going to be great distress in the land, and wrath upon these people. And that's going to come through these different police groups. Alright? And the main people that they're going to come after is your so-called Negroes, your West Indians, and your Puerto Ricans. Alright? They're going to come after you because you're the main ones that's going to uh, go against their so-called New World Order plan. Alright? You're not going to want to go. You're not, you're, you're not going to want to comply with their new rules and regulations. Alright? Go on. It says, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right, and that happened during 70 AD, when we fell as a nation, and we were led away into all nations, particularly the north part of Africa and the west part of Africa. That's how we got into Africa, fleeing Roman persecution. And the year for that was 70 AD. Alright? So that prophecy already was already fulfilled. Now notice it says, Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, as the other nations, until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now when is that going to happen? When those nuclear missiles wipe away America, alright? Then it will be time for us to go back to our homeland Jerusalem, go back to our homeland Israel, and rebuild that land. All right, we're not going to be rebuilding it. We're going to have slaves to rebuild it. And those slaves are going to be the Edomites, which is the so-called white boy, and all the other nations. All right, you can find that in the book of Psalms, the 149th chapter. The first crop of slaves are going to be those international banking families, which are the ones that are trying to bring that so-called New World Order. All right, they're going to be the first crop of slaves. Like I said, you can find that in the book of Psalms, the 149th chapter, beginning at the 5th verse, I believe. Go on. Uh, Luke 21 and 25. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Right, go on. Men's hearts failing them for fear... Right, men's hearts failing them for fear. Men's hearts failing them for fear. All right, because the things that are coming, the average man won't understand it. They won't understand it. They don't understand that a nu uh, nuclear war is on its way. They don't understand that uh, this government is going to try to institute a new world order. 
using uh, martial law where the military t takes over, where you have military checkpoints on the highways, where you have curfews, where you have disease warfare, where you have uh, the chemtrails, which are going on right now, mm -hmm. which is all leading to what? Men's hearts failing them for fear, because there's going to be a biological attack. This is why you have the chemtrails. The chemtrails, you might ask, well, what are the chemtrails? The chemtrails is the planes that you see, especially early in the morning, that fly in the skies and that drop. I think the chemical, the name of the chemical is called barium. All right, and th that's designed to weaken your immune system so that when they have this biological attack, you'll be susceptible to it. All right, it's all by design. All right, that's all part of men's hearts failing them for fear. Go on. It says, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Right, uh, for, and uh, read that again, please. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Right, which are coming on the earth. Go on. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Right, so immediately after all these things happen, this is why we're going to rejoice because when we see these things happening, we know that Yahweh Shai, which the world calls Jesus Christ, we know that he, he, he and the angels are on their way back to claim, to basically to claim his throne, to claim his kingdom and to bring down the so-called white man. So that's why we're going to be rejoicing. Like it says back in uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter and the 12th, uh, and the 12th verse. All right? I'd like you to read 27 again. All right, uh, Luke 21, 27. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a, in a cloud with power and great glory. Right, with power and great glory. And why is he coming back? He's coming back to destroy the so-called white man. Mm -hmm to bring him down, bring his empire down, to destroy his so-called New World Order, which he's going to try to institute, and set basically set up his kingdom. And what does that mean for us, the so-called Negro, West Indian, Puerto Rican, who are the Israelites? What does that mean for us? That means that we're going to be ruling underneath the one the world calls Jesus Christ, which his name is Yahweh Shai. We're going to be ruling. It's going to be our turn. Yeah. All right, and then if I could say something, um. And these pastors in these churches, if you notice, a lot, the majority of them pastors, they're not teaching anything anyway, but they're not preparing the people for what's coming. Yeah, we're going to go into that too. And you even have certain, certain guys that claim to be Israelites that are not preparing the people for what's coming. Right. You know, they're not telling them about the martial law. They're not telling them about things that are coming and warning them because they're not really shepherds of the Lord, you know, of the, of the flock. You know, because if they were shepherds of the flock, they would be telling the people what's coming. And, it, and, it's, and showing them through scriptures that these things must come to pass and these things must happen. That's right. That's why we're doing this show right now. You know, basically we bring this stuff out on the street, but this is a more calmer, a more controlled setting. So you're able to follow along and, you know, if it, we're moving too fast for you, that's okay because you can always rewind and uh, go back and, and watch it online, you know, and uh, catch up to speed. All right, so uh, let's go on. Uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 28. And when these things begin to come to pass. And when these things that we read about. Go on. Then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. Right. So who's redemption? Who's that talking about? Us. The ones of us that believe in this truth, that believe in this Bible, that follow this Bible, that are teaching the truth on this Bible. We're going to lift up our heads and be in you know, a state of joy because that's our redemption. And it's drawing nigh. So we know these things must come. We're not afraid of these things that are coming. We're not afraid of this martial law of BS. We're not afraid of these so-called concentration camps that this government got set up. We're not afraid of the biological warfare that this government's going to bring. We're not afraid of all that stuff because we know it must come before we get the hell out of here, before we're redeemed. All right? Yes. Um, I got a quick scripture yes. in uh, the book of Proverbs, the uh, third chapter, and the uh, 25th verse. And uh, it says, uh, Proverbs 3 and 25, Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. 
You can elaborate. Right. So basically, as the brother saying, who see when these things happen, Esau, Esau really think these at least really think that that they're doing their their own uh, plans to set up this so-called martial law and all these different uh, uh, things that are happening around the world to to uh, set up their so-called new world order, to set up their kingdom and make their empire greater. But really what they're doing is they're just working for the Most High on the left-hand side, and when they get to a certain point, that's when the Most High is going to have to step in, because he said, except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh be left to be saved, because they plan on doing a whole lot of damage to, to Israel, the so-called Negroes, West Indians, and Puerto Ricans. They plan on doing a whole lot of damage, and if the Most High doesn't stop them and cut the time short, they'll kill every damn body, pretty much, you know? Mm -hmm. That's why the Lord has to step in. That's why we're praying for these things to heavy up and come, so mm -hmm. that the Most High can step in and, and do what He said He was going to do, and cut this man short, his time short. Right, and deliver us. Right. And if you think the so-called white man is not the master of disaster, just look at the earth. And his sharp rule, he's only been ruling about, what, 500, maybe 600 years since the Bourget Empire took over in the latter part of the 1300s. In less than, what, 700 years maybe, 800 years, he's brought the earth to, what, the brink of destruction. He's polluted the water. He's destroyed the trees. He's destroyed the, the air that we breathe. So he's the master of disaster. So he got to go. He got to go. All right? He's, this so-called white man has got to go, and he will go. All right, so now, keep, I, I, keeping on. Yeah, okay, go ahead. I got another scripture real quick. Mm -hmm. This is Psalms, the 82nd chapter, and the 5th verse, to elaborate on what you just said. Uh, Psalms 82 and 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundation of the earth, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Right, all the foundations of the earth are what? Out of course. And who brought who brought it to that state? The so-called white man. The devil. Satan. Beelzebub. That's what he is. And you got a lot of uh, Israelites that are afraid, so-called Israelites that are afraid to say that. You know, they want to be a kind of gentler Israelite. The hell with that, man. Play it safe. What is written in the book of Isaiah, the 58th chapter? It says, cry aloud and what? Spare not. So you're not, to, you're not to spare anybody. Anybody that's doing wrong, you're supposed to uh, bring out the wrong that they're doing. And the so-called white man, he's the, he's the people of wrong, right? Everything he does is wrong. He's the devil, all right? Okay, so now let's go on uh, to 2nd Esdras, the 16th chapter. We're talking about martial law here. You know, I want to keep on the same track here. 2nd Esdras, the 16th chapter, and the 60th uh, Beginning at the 67th verse. Alright? It says this. Second uh, Ezra is now. Ezra is in the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is part of the Bible. For those of you advanced students, you know about the Apocrypha, so you can follow along. But the Apocrypha is uh, part of the Bible. Okay? It was taken out basically by the devil. Because when you go in the Apocrypha, it reveals about Jacob and Esau. And these elites, they know who Esau is. They know that they're Esau, the so-called white man. He knows he's Esau. They're the elites of them. So they don't want you finding out, you so-called Negroes, they don't want you finding out that information. So basically they took the Apocrypha out of the Bible. All right? So now uh, 2 Ezra 16 and uh, seven, uh, 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. This is what we're telling you. The Most High is the judge here, right? And the Most High wants you to leave off from your sins and your iniquities. What is what is sin? Transgression of the law. So in other words, you're supposed to learn the law of the Heavenly Father. When you read the book of Psalm 78 and 5, it tells you the Lord gave Israel a law. All right? The Lord never gave us religion. He gave us laws, statutes, and commandments that we're supposed to follow. So anytime you break these laws, statutes, and commandments, then you're sinning. So in order for you to uh, know about sin, you got to know about the law. When you go to the book of Romans, the seventh chapter, the seventh verse, Paul explains to you that he didn't know sin except he knew the law. All right? So the laws of the Heavenly Father are very important. Don't let these so-called pastors fool you into 
you know, having you believe that the Lord, the, the Lord is uh, void, that the, the Lord is not dealing anymore with His laws, His statutes, His commandments. That's bullshit. All right, basically. All right, going on it says, "Behold, God Himself is the Judge. Fear Him. Leave off from your sins." Which what is sin? First John three and four, transgression of the law. And forget your iniquities, to meddle no more with them forever. So shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. So if you do that, when this government tries to institute this martial law, when they try to institute these these uh, camps, these so-called concentration camps, all right, which they got the reason why they have these concentration camps is because they plan to have um, people locked up that resist them. See, when they try to institute this so-called New World Order, anybody that resists them, they plan to throw them in these so-called detention centers or concentration camps. And some of them, they might torture them, all right? Some of them, they might just in, in, uh, jail them indefinitely, or some of them, they might try to put them in a labor camp, all right? Going on, it says, For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you, and feed you, being idle, with things offered unto idols. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision, and in reproach, and trodden underfoot. And basically, that's talking about you so-called Negroes that trust in this government, right? You trust in the so-called white man. But you don't have a clue what he's really trying to bring. You don't really understand that he is the children of Satan, that he's the children of the devil. All right? For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. And that's talking about you, you so-called Negroes. What does the word insurrection mean? A rebellion. All right? So they're going to come against you. They're going to throw you out of your houses. All right? Some of them, they're going to shoot you in broad daylight, especially when they try to institute this curfew. And if they find you out on the street, you know, basically, that's your ass. All right? Basically. <laughs> I mean, uh, not trying to sound funny. As you look at the picture, the picture shows you what kind of government is coming after the next attack. And you should want America to be destroyed. Because if America is not destroyed, this is what you're going to have to look forward to. All right? What you see on the screen there. This is reality. All right? It says, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities, mainly in the cities, and where are you so-called Negroes located? You're located in the cities. All right? Every major city has what? A ghetto. Now who's in the ghetto? You. A great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Who are the ones that fear the Lord? The so-called white man does not fear the Lord. If you go to the book of Psalms, I think it is uh, 36. Right. Let's go to the book of Psalms 36. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 36, verse 1. The transgression of the wicked... Wait a minute. Hold it. Wait a minute. <laughs> the transgression of the wicked... Who's the wicked? Let's go to Job 9 and 24. Job chapter 9... Verse 24, it says, uh, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Right, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Who's ruling the earth? Well, the so-called white man. He's the one ruling the earth. His policy is over all the earth. All right, he calls the shots. The international bankers who rule the whole world, the Rothschilds family, the Rockefeller family, the DuPonts, the Gettys, they are all so-called white people, and they rule this whole entire world. So the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. They are the wicked. All right, go on. It says, he covereth the faces of the judges thereof. Right, and you see that on the shows, out on the street, how we demonstrate how the so-called white man has put up his face as being what? The real judge, which he's not. He put up his face over the face of the so-called black man as being the real judge. And the head judge is the one that the world calls Jesus Christ, which is a so-called black man. Now today, 
uh, people grow up learning that Jesus Christ is what? The so-called white man. So that's the evidence of that. <clears throat> All right, go on. It says, if not, where and who is he? Right, so a lot of our people don't want to accept that the white man is the devil, that the white man is the wicked. So God, you know, the Most High got a little sarcastic. He said, if, if, the, if the white man is not the wicked, you tell him where and who is he? All right, now let's go back to Psalms. All right, Psalms chapter 36, verse 1. The transgression of the wicked. Who is the wicked? The so-called white man. We proved that in Job. Go on. Saith within my heart that there is no fear of the Most High or of God before his eyes. Right, so the so-called white man does not fear the Most High, period. All right? So when you go back to Second Ezra 16 and uh, 71, it says, They shall be like madmen, sparing none. And that's these different police groups. All right, they have orders. They will have orders to shoot you down if you resist. They will have orders to destroy you if you resist. All right? And like the brother said earlier, these so-called pastors are not telling you what's coming. They're not warning you. And we're going to go into that. i got a document here that basically brings out the truth on these phony-ass pastors, which are nothing but poverty pimps. All they're in it, all they're in it for is the money. They're all about the money. And I got a scripture that basically shows you that outright. It's found in the book of Micah, the third chapter. All right, so let me just get through this. It says, they shall be as they shall be like madmen sparing none. Now remember earlier the brother said that the scripture said in the book of Matthew, except those days be shortened, there shall no flesh left to be saved. Because these devils, they're going to go wild trying to bring this uh, so-called new world order. All right? Uh, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Where well, we were in the book of 2nd Ezra 16 and 71. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Now do you know that this government has something called executive orders? And one of the executive order is to uh, basically take over your home. Take over your house. How about that for you that believe in the American dream? <laughs> You believe in the American dream? Uh, yes. I got yes. some executive yes. orders. Yes. No, you can finish. I'm, I got some executive orders for you. Okay, well, go into it. All right, go I got, it. like the brothers going into, like, they're going to take your houses, these precious little houses that you busted your ass so hard to um, to uh, work for, and you think you have, you know, that white picket fence and that American dream. Well, guess what? The, the so-called white man, the devil, he got some executive orders that's going to take possession of everything that you own and even including yourself. I'm just going to briefly read a few of them. Right? This is Executive Order 10990. Allows the government to take over all models of transportation and controls of highways and seaports. Executive Order 10995. Federal seizure of all communications media in the U.S. Executive Order 10997, Federal Seizure of All Electric Power, Fuels, Minerals, Public and Private. Uh, Executive Order 10998, Federal Seizure of All Food Supplies and Resources, Public and Private and All Farms and Equipment. Executive Order 10999, Federal Seizure of All Means of Transportation, including cars, trucks, or vehicles of any kind, and total over all highways, seaports, and waterways. Executive Order 11000, Federal Seizure of American People for Workforces under Federal Supervision, including the splitting up of families if the government so desires, and so on and so forth. These, these devils, as the scriptures say, they're, 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 uh, they're greedy and they can never have enough. Mm -hmm. And they'll keep taking and taking until there's nothing else to be taken. And then they'll find something else to take. Yeah, they're going to take you. Now, uh, that's why America has to, I'm going to say it, that's why America has to be destroyed. That's it. All right? He just read a list of executive orders that they plan to imp implement after this next attack during martial law. So those of you that have your hope in America, that looking forward for America to prosper in America, you think Obama is going to get in there and lead you to the promised land in America, you got your head up the wrong part of your anatomy, man. You're not dealing with reality. 
you're gonna find out Obama is, is paid off too. He's he's part of the, the machine of the international bankers. He's nothing but a puppet and he ain't gonna do nothing for you. All right? The American dream, like the old saying goes, the American dream is over. The American nightmare is beginning. Alright? And what he just read there, that's the American nightmare. Executive orders. Alright, let's go back to the Bible. It says Second Ezra sixteen and seventy two. But they shall waste who is the day? This government, this so-called Illuminati government, all right, with their muscle, which is the police force, the MJTF, the ATF, the, the BATF, FEMA, all right, for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses, mm. all right, that's why, and then one of the executive orders that he read is forced relocation. That's why they got these camps ready for you, you know, because if you resist the New World Order, and even if you don't resist, if they feel like saying that you're a terrorist, because the new buzzword is terrorist. Now, when you go into history, back during the Roman Empire, the buzzword was Christian. Mm -hmm. If you were, see, a lot of people now, once they want to be a Christian. They don't understand the term Christian. That was something that the Romans called us. To make fun of us and to also identify us as a rebel. Oh, he's a Christian, which means he's a rebel. He believes in a, a guy by the name of Jesus that's going to come one day and destroy this Roman Empire and set up his kingdom. Therefore, he's a rebel. Now, the word, the buzzword that they have today is terrorist. All right? <laughs> so, it's the same thing that they did to the Christians, especially during the time of Nero, when Nero burned the down the city of Rome and blamed it on the Christians. Who was that? That was our people, so-called Negroes, West Indians, and Puerto Ricans. We were the we were the bad guy. We were the enemy. Well, it's the same thing in this empire, because this empire is nothing but an extension of the Roman Empire. Right. That's all it is. There's nothing that hasn't changed. All right. So it says, uh, then shall Second uh, Ezra sixteen and seventy three. Then shall they be known who are my chosen, and they shall be tried as the gold in the fire. All right? The Most High is going to try us through this period, but the Lord is going to deliver us. See, we know that. That's why we're not afraid of any of this stuff that's coming, coming to pass. All right? Right. Um, right. You know, because uh, the bottom line is that when that, this stuff comes, comes to pass, see, we're giving you warning right now. And the Lord did say, he said, look, go out there and give a warning of me. And they, whether they will hear, whether they will forbear, you know, we got to teach anyway, you know. So the ones of, of the Lord, of, of the Lord's elect that are to be sealed and to be protected are going to accept it. And the rest of them, message you, two, two thousand of you niggas, West Indians and Puerto Ricans, you're going to get caught right up. See that guy right there? That's going to be your, your, your new buddy right there. <laughs> and you know what he's going to do? He's going to take that thing and shove it right up your ass and <laughs> shove you in a con concentration camp. You guys out there that, 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 that's half stuff and that's bullshit, that's what's coming. Exactly. That is exactly what's coming. And mm -hmm. the only ones that are going to escape is the ones that the Most High has given his knowledge to and the ones that take heed to his word. That's right. And the, if you look at that picture, that, that guy, he doesn't look like he, he wants to play. Nope. Right? He doesn't have that gun for no reason. <laughs> All right? Now, he mentioned, what you got to understand, there's two groups of people. You have the, now I looked up this term, you have the exoteric and you have the esoteric. I want to read, I think this is very important because I want to read this to you. Who, would, who is the exoteric? Well, what does the word exoteric mean? It means suitable for or communicated to the general public. This is a person that would be classified as an exoteric. Suitable for or communicated to the general public, not belonging, limited, or pertaining to the inner or select circle as of dis disciples or initiates. Popular, simple, commonplace, pertaining to the outside, exterior, external. So the exoteric person, that's the person on the outside. That's the person that don't know what the hell is going on. All right? Now you have the esoteric. Now I'm showing you that these elites, they know these terms. They know that people could be classified as either the exoteric or the esoteric. We that's bringing out this truth to you, we're the, we're the, on the inside, we're the esoteric. 
I'll read the uh, definition. Esoteric, understand or understood by or meant for only the select few who have special knowledge or interest. Did you hear that? That's the esoteric. I'd like you to get me the book of, uh, what is it, Mark? Um, unto you is given. I think it's Mark. Um, I know the one in Matthew. All right, you, know you can get the one in Matthew, but I think there's uh, one in Mark. I'm not sure exactly what the one Mark, Mark uh, is. 4 is it? But you, you can go to the one in Matthew. Mm. I think it's Mark 4 and 11. Uh, let me get that. Let me get that. Yeah, Mark, yeah, go to the book of Mark 4 and 9, because this scripture in Mark 4 and 9 it illustrates what the point that I'm trying to bring out here about the esoteric. I read about the exoteric, all right? The exoteric is the people on the outside. They don't know what the hell is going on. The esoteric, if you read the definition, it's spelled E-S-O-T-E-R-I-C, <coughs> understood by or meant for only the select few who have special knowledge or interests. Belonging to the select few, private, secret, confidential. <laughs> All right, so there you, there you go. You have two groups of people. You have the esoteric and you have the exoteric. So the people that scoff at this word, they're the exoteric. The people that make fun of this, they're the exoteric. They're on the outside. The esoteric is us that's bringing out this truth. Now to back that up scripturally, let's go to the book of Mark 4, start at 9. Uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 9. And he said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone... They that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. Now who's this he? The he is talking about the one in the world calls Jesus. When he was alone, the twelve disciples, they came up they came upon him and they asked him about the parable that he had just spoke. See the parables were meant for the es or exoteric, for the people on the outside. Alright? But the meaning of the parables was meant for the esoteric. Alright? And that's us. Go on. Verse 11, and he said unto them, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of the Most High. Like I said, when you go back and read the definition of exoteric, it says uh, belonging to the select few, private, secret, confidential. All right, go on. But unto them that are without. That's the exoteric. That's the people on the outside. Like I just read, the, read you the definition. All right, exoteric, suitable for or communicated to the general public. <laughs> all right, that's the exoteric. Go on. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Mm -hmm. That seeing they may see and not perceive. That's why the majority of our people don't, don't get this truth. And even if they watch this show, they're still not going to get it. Because, excuse me, they're part of that club. The exoteric. Go on. And hearing they may hear and not understand. Go on. He said, any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? So that's the point right there, all right? That's the point right there. So what we're speaking right now, it's like a parable, but to those of us that the Most High is dealing with, it's really not. We understand what's coming. And we're preparing for it. All right? I got a quick precept. Yes. This is the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 5. First uh, Thessalonians, chapter 5. Uh, I guess I can start at the first verse. Point is around the fourth verse. So First Thessalonians 5 and 1. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. What does that mean, a thief in the night? When a thief comes in the night, he doesn't announce that he's, he's going to come and rob you. He comes on the, down, on the DL, on the down low. So this is how the one the world calls Jesus Christ is coming. He's going to come back when, when the majority of people least expect it. Now he left us clues, and we know what the clues are. That's why we're teaching you. Well, that's why we're making this uh, show right now. These are some of the clues. 
to let you know when he's coming back. Go on. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Right, he's speaking to the people, the select few that are in the know. All right? Like the definition that I read, the esoteric. He's not speaking to the exoteric. Go on. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. All right. So now, let's go to the book of 2 Ezra 15, beginning at uh, the 14th verse. Because we're going to talk about more about this martial law, because that is our topic. And I read to you earlier at the top of the show the definition of martial law. This is when the military takes over, all right? And the military becomes a, a form of government that's going to govern what you call America. It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> like I, If you take a look at the picture, with this guy that you see there on the screen, he's part of that new government that's coming. And you know what? They do rehearsals all over America. They, they do uh, mock terrorist attacks and uh, they do mock stage events to bring these guys in and they, and they uh, rehearse. Just like an actor rehearses for a play. These guys rehearse. Now why are they rehearsing for? Because <laughs> they know that these things are coming. They're getting prepared. Now what are you so-called Negroes doing? You're, you're out in the street, you're dancing, you're singing, you're driving up in your car, you're, you're playing your music, you're having a good time, you're going to parties. You haven't got a clue what's coming. All right? So that's why we're here to peradventure warn you. All right? Let's go to 2 Ezra 15 and 14. Go on. 2 Ezra chapter 15 verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. Right, this is what's coming. Destruction. Alright? Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. Alright? And the sword, the sword represents destruction. Go on. It says, For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another. Right, because when these different police groups... There you go. When these different police groups come on the scene, you're going to have certain jakes that's going to fight against these guys. Because jakes got guns too. That's right. <laughs> you know, you got Negroes in the ghetto that have guns. So that's what it means. One people shall fight against another people. And what is that? That is race war. That is race war, brothers. Now, hold that. Let's go to the book of Micah, the fifth chapter. You see how all these scriptures come to life? They come to life because we're linking them to the events that are coming. All right? Those of you that think the Bible is not accurate, are they tampered with the Bible? No, they tampered with your minds. All right? All right, Micah chapter 5, verse 7. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people, as a dew from the Lord, as a showers upon the grass. Right, Jacob represents Israel, as you well know. So the remnant of Jacob, that's these so-called Negroes, West Indians, Puerto Ricans, shall be in the midst of many people, that's the other nations. All right, which are right here in America. Wait a minute, is there many people right here in America? Isn't America known as a melting pot? Yep, yeah. the, the melting pot. Right. right, the melting pot. So Jake is going to be, our people are going to be among the midst of many people, which it should say many nations, because that's what you have here in America. America is known as what? The melting pot. You have all different nations right here. All right, go on. As the showers upon the grass mm -hmm. that tarrieth not for man, mm -hmm. nor waiteth for the sons of men. Mm -hmm. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles. Shall be among, the, the, see, the many people is talking about who? The Gentiles are just talking about who? The other nations. All right? It's not talking about the Israelite foreigners. It's talking about the other nations. Go on. In the midst of many people, Go on. as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion among the flocks of sheep. Right, as a lion, and you all know the nature of a lion. A lion's nature is to be destructive. All right, go on. Who if he go through, 
both tread it down and tear it in pieces, and none can deliver. And none can deliver. All right, so these uh, so-called Negroes, they're going to go head up with these uh, different police groups. Guys like that. Skinheads. You know, right. You have your skinheads. You have all these different paramilitary cracker. groups. Cracker-ass cracker groups. Yeah, cracker-ass cracker groups like the brother said. You're going to have all these groups that Jake is going to come against. We know that a lot of Jakes are going to be destroyed, you know, predominantly in the first wave when this government comes after them. But after a while, it's going to be pretty hard to get to, to, uh, get to Jake. Because you got a lot of so-called Negroes out there that have guns, that have ammunition, that have weapons. That are warriors. That are warriors and not, they're not going to be afraid to use them. And they're going to understand in those days that the so-called white man is truly the devil. And it's going to be all about survival. Alright? So that's what that scripture in Micah, the fifth chapter and the seventh verse means. That's race war right there. So for, for you that's saying that race war is not in the Bible... The Lord is not dealing with race war. You're, you're, you're lost. All right? Yeah. There's more. Yep. Go Verse on. 9. Thine hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, and all thine enemies shall be cut off. And it, it literally means that all thine enemies shall be cut off. Go on. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots, and I will cut off the cities of the land of thy land and throw down all thy strongholds. Mm -hmm. And that's going to happen in one day when those nuclear missiles hit this place called America. That's another thing, too, that a lot of these other so called Israelite groups are not teaching that America is going to be destroyed by nuclear missiles. They're trying to pacify our people. You know? They're, t they're teaching them that uh, you got to learn to clean up the community. What the hell is that? Clean up the community? First of all, we don't have no community. You go to the book of Deuteronomy 28 and 48, it tells you that we will serve our enemies, which is the so-called white man, for all things. So the so-called white man is the one that controls the community. If there's drugs in, in your community, black man, it's because the white man wants drugs in your community. You mean to tell me the so-called white man has all this power, he can send people to the moon, he can place them on the moon, which is that's what he claims. Supposedly, allegedly. Supposedly, allegedly. All right, there's a debate on that. But he has the power to, to make people believe that he can put somebody on the moon, but he can't clean up your community, your so-called community. If there's drugs in your community, it's because the so-called white man wants drugs in your community. Yep. If there's guns in your community, it's because the so-called white man wants guns in your community. So don't be fooled by these guys talking about you can clean up your own com community. That's bullshit. We're under the curses, man. The Most High put a series of curses on us, mm -hmm. and that's why we're in the ghettos. <clears throat> that all goes back to the curses. And, and the, I mean, you know, why would you want to try to clean up your community when the Most High is going to destroy this place? Exactly. You're talking about cleaning up your community like, it, like you said, like it's yours, you know? That's bullshit, man. And don't let these guys fool you, all right? We look at what the scriptures say. We're looking for a, 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 the rest, the rest that's coming, which is the kingdom. Right, not in no goddamn community. We're going to be resting in our own. You're going to have your own land, your own mansion. The one that Jesus Christ, the world calls Jesus Christ, said, In my Father's house are many mansions. That's found in the book of John 14, I believe. We're going to have mansions, not no freaking community. All right, we're going to have uh, palaces. You know, you can read about what we're going to have in the book of Revelation. I believe it's the 22nd chapter. All right? Yeah, quick precept. Uh, yep. Psalms chapter 149. And we're going to have slaves. How about that? Because royal people, we are royal people. Royal people have slaves. Royal people don't give a, don't think small like cleaning up your community. Goddamn wasteland. Nothing but, uh, uh, uh. The air is all polluted. The land is all polluted. The hell with the goddamn community, man. It's time for you so-called Negroes to think big, man. Stop thinking big. All right, go on. All right, Psalms 149 and 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. 
Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Right. We're going to have the power living as, as having slaves. And you're going to have the power to beat the hell out of your slaves if you want to. That's power. That's thinking big. You have your slaves do everything for you. You don't, you don't have to do a goddamn thing. All right, go on. Uh, I got a, another one. Yep. This is a Isaiah 54, verse 2. No, uh, I'd like you to go back to Psalm 149. Okay. Because there's a lot of meat in there. All right. All right. Uh, Psalms 149, verse uh, 6. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Right, that's what it's all about. That's living. To execute vengeance upon the heathen, that's the other nations, and punishments upon the people. That too is the other nations. That's what life is all about. <laughs> not, not cleaning your goddamn community. <laughs> Go on. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Right, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Who's that talking about? These international banking families, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. They're the kings of the earth. We're talking about FEMA and these different police groups. Who are the ones, Who do they work for? They work for these international bankers. All right, that's their muscle. So imagine when we have the power to bring these guys down and to bring the guys that they work for down. Now that's power. You can't tell me there's nothing better than that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Go on. It says to execute upon them the judgment written. To execute upon them the judgment written. Go on. This honor have all his saints praise you the Lord. Now let's read the judgment. Because it says to execute upon them the judgment written. Where is that found? Let's go to the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter. Because that's what you so-called Negroes fail to realize, that God, the one you call God, is a power of judgment. Yes, he loves. Yes, he shows mercy to Israel. To Israel, but not to everybody. But he also deals with what? Judgment. No matter how much you niggas love this so-called white man, I want you to remember this, that the so-called white man is going to be judged. All right? Though hand join in hand. Exactly. Pro the book of Proverbs 11 and 21 says, Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not go unpunished. That's judgment. The wicked is the so-called white man. Then when you go to the book of Jeremiah, the 49th chapter, and the 12th verse, I believe, it says, Shall thou be the one that shall altogether go unpunished? All right, that's judgment. Mm -hmm. So these goddamn crackers are going to receive judgment, all right? Yeah. They're going to pay for what they have done. The reason why we went down is because we received judgment. The reason why we're in the ghetto is because we, that was part of our judgment. All right? Go on. Revelation 13, 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Mm -hmm. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. What is that? Judgment. Who led us into captivity? So-called white man. And not just him, the, all the other nations too. They had a hand in our captivity. The Africans had a hand in our captivity. Arab. The Arabs had a hand in our captivity. East so they're Indian. going, right, the East Indians. So they're going into slavery too. All right, go on. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Again, what is that? Judgment. All right, who killed us with the sword? The so-called white man. And he's getting ready to kill us with the sword again, <laughs> you know. Well, not us, that not the ones that believe in the Heavenly Father. Oh, no. Mosiah is going to deliver us. In the book of Isaiah, the 41st chapter, the Lord said he's going to make us a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. So we're going to be like a souped up lawnmower on these crackers. <laughs> you know, we're going to be like a supreme weapon on these devils. That's the power the Lord is going to give us. But to you stupid-ass niggas that trust in America, to you stupid-ass niggas that trust in the white man, to you stupid-ass niggas that trust in this American dream bullshit, this is what you got coming. All right? And you're not going to be delivered. The Lord is going to allow you to perish underneath these devils because you trust in him. And I'm going to show you that in the next scripture. All right, go on. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Now, on that note, let's go to the book of Isaiah, the 65th chapter. I'm going to go back to 2nd Ezra, but I, now that I made that comment about you going to perish, let's go to Isaiah 65 and see if that's not true. 
Isaiah the 65th chapter, beginning at what, uh, 11th verse, yeah. Isaiah 65 and 11. But you are they that forsake the Lord. Right, and who's that talking about? You hard-headed, knuckle-headed nigger that walk around talking about the white man's not the devil. You got niggas in this, in this day and age. 2008. 2008, walking around talking about the white man's not the devil. After all the freaking wickedness that the so-called white man has have done, you're you're gonna you're gonna say that the white man's not the devil, nigga. You the devil for saying that bullshit. The so-called white man is the devil. Yeah, show the devil again with that gun. Are you gonna say the white man's not the devil when you see that in front of you? He's about to blow your grandmother away. Yep. About to blow your little baby away. About to blow your, your little sister, your little baby sister away. Are you stupid ass nigga? Are you going to say that the so-called white man is not the devil? And don't say it can't happen because underneath martial law, anything goes. It's going to happen. Underneath martial law, the, the right to have habeas corpus, which is Latin for have the body, which is to be brought to a court system and be judged, that's out of here. There is no court system under martial law. There is no rights under martial law. You have no rights. You don't have jack squat. All you have is a guy like that in front of you, ready to blow your dumb ass away. Are you going to say the white man's not the devil then? Go on. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain. What's the Lord's holy mountain? Israel. You forgot about Israel. And when we out there on the streets telling you that you're Israelite, get your act together, get yourself together, you walk past us, you fan your hand, you call, you call us all kind of names, and you think you're cute for doing that. Well, are you going to think you're cute when this guy, bring it back again, bro. Well, are you going to think you're cute when this guy is in front of you, ready to blow you away? Go on. And it's not going to be just him. It's going to be a hundred guys like him. Two hundred guys like him. A thousand like him. All right? Yeah, let's get some more, some more, uh, mo there you go. And they're, they're not carrying these, those batons for no reason. They plan to use them. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about martial law here. This is what's coming after the next attack. They're coming to kick much ass. They, could, they don't look like they're coming to hand you lollipops, all right? They look like they're coming to kick your fucking ass. All right? That's, 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 what, that's what the deal is. All right? Go on. That prepare a table for that troop. That prepare a table for that troop. What is that? That's a troop. Now, during when the North American Indians, right? Uh, uh, you can even see it uh, 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 on movies. It's called the troop, Custer's Last Stand, and, and movies like that. The so-called white man was known as what? A troop, and they came a, uh, against the North American Indians and they slaughtered them. Man, they destroyed the cavalry. Killed. The cavalry, right? They gave them smallpox-infested blankets, and the ones that they didn't kill, they shot them down like in cold blood. All right, that was the M.O. of the so-called white man back then. They did that to the women and the children. When the braves were out of the villages, they would come in the village and, and mow them down, tread them down with their horses, and the ones they didn't kill, they would shoot them, leave them to die in the cold. That's the MO of the so-called white man. That's the MO of the one that you don't want to accept as the devil. Why don't you diggers wake up, man? Go on. And that furnished the drink offering unto that number. Right, that furnished the drink offering unto that number. That number is, the, that, there you go. That number is this, is the so-called white man. All right? And, and these, these troops. Yeah. And then these jakes that are, that are <coughs> going to be caught up into that. Right. You know? Right, because you're going to have a lot of jakes that are, that are, right, jakes. When I say jakes, our people that are caught up in this madness. They're fighting for the American dream. They believe in that New World Order crap. That New World, they done sold out to that New World Order bullshit. They're gonna be destroyed too. Yeah. All right. And, and if I can say this, a lot yep. of them, a lot of them so-called Negroes, Western and Puerto Ricans, they're drinking this philosophy down of the American dream, like if they were drinking a, a, a cold bottle of beer. Yeah, or cold, cold ice beer, ice, right? Ice, uh, a glass of wine mm -hmm. down down the down the hatch or some water. Yeah, they're at, you're at the polls voting. You know, that's another way of furnishing that drink. To uh, uh, how, uh, furnish the drink offering unto that number. You're out at the polls voting. Yep. <laughs> you think Obama is going to save you. You think John McCain is going to save you. You think that old lesbian Hillary is going to deliver you. Lesbo, thank you. That lesbian. Go on. 
It says, verse 12, Therefore will I number you to the sword. And that's the Lord speaking to you. He said, look, nigga, because you trust in the white man, because you trust in Hillary, because you trust in that curious George-looking nigga called Obama, the Lord said, what? I will number you to the slaughter, or I'll number you to the sword. That's the destruction. That's going to come in the form of these guys. That's going to come in the form of, of different events that's going to happen during martial law. Right and during that, excuse me. And then ultimately the, the missiles. Right, and then ultimately the missiles. Right, we can't forget about the missiles. See, that's the missiles. That's the creme de la creme. That's the that's the cherry on top of the of the cake. The nuclear missiles. But before the nuclear missiles come, the Lord, uh, I can show you a scripture where the Lord said He have certain Israelites He have reserved to judgment. Matter of fact, from there we're gonna go to that Isaiah the tenth chapter. Is. All right, go on. And you shall all bow down to the slaughter. Right, you're going to bow down to the slaughter, nigga. Show that sign again. When them, when them these these uh, uh, monkeys over here are beating you over your head with those batons, you're going to bow down to that slaughter. You're going to remember that you, that you made fun of us. You're going to remember that you talk shit about us. You're gonna, It's going to come to your memory that I shouldn't have said nothing about them brothers. Them brothers were teaching the truth. The white man truly is the devil. As them, as them batons ring upside your head. You're going to remember that. Go on. Because when I called, you did not answer. Right. The Lord is calling you when we're out there on the street. The Lord is calling you. That's, the, that's how the Lord calls you. But you didn't hear the calling. You made fun of it. You fanned your hand. You passed by the, by the brothers. You talked shit. And you didn't know what the hell was going on. And you thought you was cute. Go on. When I spake, you did not hear. Right, you did not hear. And that's the Lord speaking through us. When We're, we're telling you the truth, man. We're telling you what these, these <clears throat> fake, phony-ass, money-grubbing, fat, overweight, greasy, effeminate, faggoty, so-called pastors are not telling you. All right? These pastors, they have, they have all sold out to this so-called New World Order. All right, go on. <laughs> but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Go on. Therefore thus saith the Lord power, Behold, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Right, and that's another thing, like the brother read the executive orders. One of the executive orders is to seize all food supplies. So you want to know where your famine is coming from? There it is right there. Your food is going to be rationed, the food that you do get is going to be rationed out to you. And you know how you niggas like to eat. Alright? So in those days, it's going to be very hard to find food. Unless you go out there and, and rob and kill for it, which is what you're going to have to do. It's going to get pretty damn bad out here, man. Yep. And that's why we're making this show. Peradventure, some of you will listen, take heed. And turn your life over to the Heavenly Father. And be delivered. And be delivered. Become an Israelite. That's what you are. Be what you are. You're a Hebrew Israelite. Learn your nationality. Be born. Be uh, born again, like the scripture says. Come back to who you are. Forget about all this bullshit, man. This American dream and all this party hearty attitude. Forget about all that nonsense, man. This is what you have to look forward to if you don't turn your life over to the Heavenly Father. Yep. Take a good look at that. Get another picture, brother. Throw another picture up there. Go on. It says, Behold, my servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. You shall be ashamed. Go on. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart. But you shall cry for sorrow of heart. Because this is what these are going to be your new neighbors here. That's why you're going to cry for sorrow of heart. Yes. It, you, you thought you thought uh, that New Orleans things that happened, you thought that was bad. And you thought you was catching hell and crying then. It ain't going to be nothing like that. That was a, like a walk in the park compared to what's coming right now. Well, that New, that New Orleans uh, thing was a trial run. Exactly. I have a document here. It, the headline says, FEMA, there you go. FEMA executive orders paved the way for emerging police state hell. Did you hear that? Go right there. <laughs> That's a document that I have. That's the heading. FEMA executive orders paved the way for emerging police state hell. New Orleans is just the first to fall. Now, the brother just mentioned about New Orleans. 
That was a trial run. And that was a that right? was a little thing. And that was nothing. You had niggas complaining, oh, where be mad, where be mad. Not where's the most high at. Yeah, where's not where's the most high at. No why doesn't God deliver us? Why doesn't God you know, you niggas have become just like the so called white man. You have lost you have totally lost your faith. All you believe in is the state. All you believe in is this fucking white man. As if he's God. He you gonna find out that the so-called white man is not God, you dumb nigga. What was that? What was he? Ain't nothing but the devil. Yeah, he's nothing but the devil, man. You gonna find that out very soon. All right, I'm gonna read this this document here. This is by Steve Watson. You can type it in. Just all you gotta do is go online, type in FEMA executive orders. You, you got the plethora of uh, websites to choose from. Uh, FEMA is not an elected body. It does not involve itself in public disclosures, and it even has a quasi-secret budget in the billions of dollars. Let me tell you something. Um, uh, Halliburton was paid $385 million by the government to set up those so-called concentration camps. And this brother, he found out a, a, a document. I'd like you to speak on that, <coughs> dealing with the concentration camps. And of all places, he found it out in the old 70s, what, movie? Yep, movie, yep. Yeah, bring that, I'd like you to bring that up. Yeah, there was this old 70s movie called uh, The Spook Who Sat By The Door, you know? And um, basically what it was, it was just a movie set up where you had jakes that they were trying to get into the CIA. And, um, you know, Esau really didn't want him in there, but this one particular jake, he was so adamant and so vehement, he finally got in there. Then he left them, you know, and then he went back to his neighborhood and he set up like a rebellion amongst Jake from what he learned from the CIA, right? Now, towards the end of the movie, there was a scene where this one guy that knew him by the name of Carstairs, he, had a, uh, he was having a conversation with his general, right? And they were discussing the uprising of the rebellion, right? So the, the general was asking Carstairs, basically, what is the solution that you came up with to, to quell the situation? So then Carstairs gave him three options. He said, one, route them out one by one. Two, starve them out by siege. And three, total evacuation of the black population. So he was saying that certain, like if they try to siege on them, it's going to cost too much. And if they try to evacuate them out of the, the, the city of Detroit, they can't do that because in three days that they shut them out from going in, into the city, the whole city of Detroit was shut down. Because the majority of, of, the, of the people that worked to keep the city of Detroit going were all black, mainly, right? Just so, as it is today. Right. right. So then he said, he said the best thing, he said this, the evacuation wouldn't be a good option because the city of Chicago was dependent on black labor. Then he said, so although the concentration, then he paused, detention camps occurring under the 1950 Subversion Act already, we can't put them into immediate use. Mm. Now I happen to have a copy of, uh, an, uh, it's called An American Paradox, the Emergency Detention Act of 1950. Now this goes back, way back then. 1950. Right? right? It's, uh, by They've been planning this thing for a long time, man. Alright, go on. By Cornelius P. Cotter and J. Malcolm Smith. Right? It says, the United States currently is maintaining a group of six internment camps which will receive the thousands of persons who are to be apprehended and detained in, in the event of an internal security emergency, right? I'm just going to jump around to a few points. It says, this would not seem an excessive capacity in view of the FBI's latest estimate of 22,663 hardcore members of the Communist Party in the United States. Now, when you go back to the 50s and 60s and 70s, the buzzword back then was communism. Communism, right. Now, today, the buzzword is terrorist or terrorism, mm -hmm. right? And as you read on down, it says, The program whereby thousands of persons, regardless of American citizenship, will be arrested and interned on an administrative finding that there exists reasonable cause to believe they might engage in espionage or sabotage. This is the story of how that legislation found lodgment in the American statute books. Uh, it is an effort also to contribute to the understanding of some of the practical problems and theoretical implications stemming from the effort in a free society to cage human beings without trial mm -hmm. and in consequence of their political beliefs and associations. And the same is true today. 
Except like like you said, the same the word now is uh, the buzzword now. In the 50s, it was communist. Today, it's terrorist. Now let's go. I'm glad you read that. Let's go to the book of or uh, read that. Let's go to the book of Revelation to show you that this devil plans to put you. First of all, he plans to label you a terrorist. I'm talking about you, so-called Negroes, West Indians, Puerto Ricans. Now, underneath Project Megiddo, which you can type Project Megiddo online, basically it says if you believe in Jesus Christ, that you're a terrorist. Second coming. If you believe in the second coming, of, hell, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you're a terrorist. If you believe in the second coming of Jesus Christ, you're a terrorist. If you believe in the Bible and the kingdom of God that is coming, you're a terrorist. The new world order. Right? If you believe in the new world order, you're a terrorist. Even though that's what they're going to try to implement. Now, that, that's why if, you're a t if they label you a terrorist, that's why you're going to have guys like that coming for you. And they're going to either shoot you dead or drag you to the nearest detention center or the nearest concentration camp. Another buzzword that they have is something called an unlawful or lawful enemy combatant. And that's underneath the Military Commissions Act of 2006. This act was signed into law by George Bush on October 17, 2006. Basically it says an unlawful enemy combatant is one who is part of the Taliban or Al-Qaeda Right? Like you've heard that in the news, the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. If they say you're a part of that, then you're an unlawful enemy combatant. Now, a lawful enemy combatant is a member of a militia, a voluntary, a voluntary, a volunteer corps, or, an, or any organized resistance movement. Did you hear that? Or any organized resistance movement, then you're a lawful enemy combatant. And, under, and underneath that definition, they have the right to either shoot you dead, like this guy, this guy wants to do, or drag your ass to the nearest detention center or concentration camp. This is the reality, all right? This is what's coming after the next attack. This is why we tell you America got to be fucking destroyed, all right? Yeah, that's right. All right? This is why we tell you that the so-called white man is going to fucking go down because he's the devil, all right? Yep. When you niggas going to wake up, man? And you know what, you, you Negro women, that you, you're not going to escape this. A lot of you are going to be shot down in the streets too by guys like that. Yep. With your ass up in the air, man. Because all you do is parade your ass around and be the whores and sluts and freaks that you are. And shoot off your mouth. And shoot off your big mouth. Are you going to shoot off your mouth when a guy like this has this gun in, in, in your mouth? Are you going to do that? Now in the book of Isaiah, the 32nd chapter, from the ninth verse to the 11th verse, it speaks about you hard-headed, knuckle-headed, black oh. bitches, man. All right? Go on, brother. This is uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 2, <coughs> verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. And those prisons are those, those concentration camps. Now, you have prisons now, and the majority of them, the Jakes are in there. But the, the concentration camps are nothing like those prisons. You're going to be tortured in there. All right? Yes. And then you have, you all, you have detention centers, mm -hmm. and then you have concentration camps. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the detention centers that they have is basically a means of them transporting uh, people from one part of the country to the other. Mm -hmm. You know, and some of the places they're going to transport you to are these concentration camps. That's where you're going to be uh, um, um, uh, tortured at. Mm -hmm. But the other places, you got some places that are just a place of, uh, basically a, a passage. You go there. They can hold and stuff. Exactly. You go right. to your process, and then they say, okay, it's just like the military. You go there, you process, and then they ship, ship you out to your, to your destination. Right. Just like in the movie uh, uh, Handmaiden's Tale, where they showed you they had. Yeah. Uh, and then that's another thing you niggas don't do. You don't, you don't check out movies. You don't, you don't. They, these Illuminati. These Illuminati faggots, homosexuals, they put their hidden messages in these movies. And yeah. a good movie to watch is 1984. Another good movie to watch is Handmaiden's Tale. You yeah. can see in those movies they're showing you what kind of society they want to bring. Right. right? And this was this is that that movie Handmaiden's Tale was made back in 1990, and uh, 1984 was made back in 84. Right. You mm -hmm. know, and uh, the brother just brought out too. He said, when you get sent to these different detention uh, sites, 
or, or, or basically when you stop off before you go to the concentration camps, you're gonna they got a red list, they got a blue list, and they got a green list. And depending on what you what where you fall the on list, the list, you, you fall under, right? You either gonna be tortured, you either gonna be killed, or you're gonna get your mind right <laughs> so that they can send you back into society. And that's that green list, which cause they don't deem you as a threat on the green list. That's another reason why America has to be destroyed. Why the so-called white man has to be destroyed, all right, and why and why his remnants, which is a, his elites, have to be put in slavery, yep. all right. So it's time for you to wake up, Negro, so-called Negro, black man. It's time for you to wake up, man. All right, it's time to stop being a goddamn clown. Yep. All right, get some knowledge in your head. The knowledge you're supposed to get is this truth. All right. Yes. Sir. And if I could just say this also too, and you Latin tribes, you better get your shit together oh, yeah, too. We can't forget you about Puerto you. Puerto Ricans, you Dominicans, you uh, uh, um, Panamanians, Guatemalans, Mexicans, you better get your shit together too. Right. That dwell in America. That right. dwell in America because the Most High, he gonna come for your ass too because you're Israelites too. Right. You know. Right. As a matter of fact, under Rex 84, which is another uh, legislation that this government has passed, Rex 84, you can Google that. It says that they want to exterminate Latinos. That's right. So you so-called Puerto Ricans, don't think that you, you're going to skate off into the sunset, all right? Don't think that you're going to you're going to escape this destruction. You're part of it too. All you are is a Spanish-speaking nigga. Yep. You're yep. walking around thinking that you that you're on another level. You ain't on no level, man. You ain't nothing but a Spanish-speaking nigga. Just because you're a little bit lighter than than the black man. Right, that don't shit. mean jack shit. They they classify and label you as niggas. And you're going to have guys like that coming for you. All right? Like it says there, police state, America's new way of life. Mm -hmm. And that's from a rep reputable uh, uh, source there, Newsweek. That's not no bullshit. So they're telling you, this is what's coming. That's why we're making this this uh, this uh, 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 document. document or documentary or this show dealing with the scriptures on martial law. All right? So now let's go back to the scriptures. All right. The Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. And those prisons, like I said, is the, the camps. And for those of you that, uh, you know, there's something called a chip that they want to bring. All right. David Rockefeller himself said it. Well, not David, but Nick Rockefeller. Mm -hmm. In a conversation with Alan Russo, or Aaron Russo. I keep calling him mm -hmm. Alan Russo. Aaron Russo, in a conversation, Aaron Russo, which died just recently, he was a big time movie producer, he asked Nick Rockefeller, Rockefeller, what is the end game of all this? And he said he wants everybody to be chipped. Nick, Nick Rockefeller said that. Who is Nick Rockefeller? He's one of the elites. All right, the Rockefellers are an elite banking family just like the Rothschilds are. They call the shots. They rule America, the Rockefellers. And they want everybody chipped. So they want to bring this RFID chip into play, all right? <coughs> And you can find that in the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter and the 16th verse. All right, go on. That you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Right, and that's talking about the brothers that trust in the Heavenly Father. Now, I mentioned the chip. I have a document here. This is called FDRS, Federal Debt Relief System, Restoring America's Freedom. Resources and information. The headline says, the, the human Im implementation of RFID chips is fatal to freedom. All right? It says, uh, basically, let me go to the point. All right. Uh, human implementation of RFID chips comply or no food for you. In other words, if you don't comply with getting this chip, then you're going to be starving, <laughs> all right? Now, the thing is, if you take this chip, the Most High is going to destroy you. So it's going to come down to whether you believe in the Most High or whether you believe in the so-called white man, all right? Let's go to the book of Revelation. I got it, 3 and 10. Right. Yeah. Revelation 3 and 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation <laughs> Right, when this government brings the, the, the mandate that either you take the chip or you starve, 
if you would have listened to the Lord, if you would have trusted in the Lord, the Lord is going to deliver you. And you have plenty of examples when you read about Job, the Most High delivered Job. All the hell that Job caught, the Lord still delivered him. When you read about uh, Daniel and the lion's den, did not the Lord deliver Daniel from the lion's den? Sure he did. When you read about um, Peter, when Peter was jailed, did not the Lord deliver Peter out of the jail? Yes, he did. What about Paul? All the hell that Paul caught, the Most High delivered him out of all of his ad adversity. So the Most High, if you know the Most High, if you know his name, which is Yahweh, and his son's name, which is Yahweh Shai, and you know the truth, the Lord is going to deliver you. Right. But if you if you forsake the Lord, you can forget about it, nigga. Yeah, you got this guy go to, to, to deal with. Got it, right? Got a quick precept. Yeah. This is our Proverbs, the 18th chapter and the 10th verse. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Right, so don't believe these guys that tell you the name of the Lord is, is, is not uh, important. You got these wicked ass so-called Israelites out there teaching that the name of the Lord is not important. The name of the Lord, right, for money, for uh, filthy lucre's sake, the name of the Lord is very important. All right, that's the name that's going to deliver you. That's the first thing Moses asked the Lord. So we're going to end this right here. All right, we're going to do part two and t uh, take up where we left off. But I think this is a very heavy topic. We can't say everything in one show. There's just so much to cover in this topic. So we're going to come at it again uh, on part two. But for now, I say shalom. All right. And death to America. Death to the so-called white man. All right. And, uh, death to two-thirds of you so-called niggas. Right. Niggas death to two-thirds of you hard-headed, knuckle-headed niggas. And uh, shalom to the people that believe in this truth, which are the Israelites. The real Israelites. The true Israelites. The elect. Shalom to you. The elect. Shalom.